Welcome to Electron Online, and in, in this video, we're going to learn how to use the inverse trigonometric function, the inverse sine, the inverse cosine, the inverse tangent or so, to solve a right angle triangle. And yes, this is a right angle triangle because there's a symbol indicating that's 90 degrees. Here we have the angle theta. And notice that we're given the length of the three sides. The opposite side to the angle is 5 centimeters, the adjacent side is 8.66 centimeters, and the hypotenuse is 10 centimeters. What we don't know is the angle. And so to find the angle, we can use an inverse trigonometric function. Theta, the angle, is equal to the inverse sine of the ratio of the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. How do we know that? Because the definition of the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite side divided by hypotenuse. Now, that may not seem to mean much to you at this point, but stay tuned. Take a look at this. If I use numbers, the numbers that are given here, things will probably make sense. So what I'm claiming here, based on this definition of the inverse sine, is that the angle theta can be found by taking the inverse sine of the opposite side, the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. The opposite side is 5 centimeters. Oh, not the adjacent side, but the hypotenuse is 10 centimeters. Notice that's 5 divided by 10, which is 1 half. So the angle theta can be found by taking the arc sine of 1 half. Now, the way you can think about this is ask yourself the, the next question. For what angle of theta is the sine of that angle equal to 1 half? Hmm, for what angle is the sine equal to 1 half? And they say, I remember that. That's equal to... Uh, pi over 6 or 30 degrees. So you know that by looking at this you can realize oh that the sine of 30 degrees remember the sine of 0 degrees is equal to 0 the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1 half the sine of 45 degrees which is equal to the square root of 2 over 2 which is equal to 0 0.707 the sine of 60 degrees is equal to the square root of 3 over 2, which is equal to 0 0.866. And finally, the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. And so you realize, ah, that's right, the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. That, that means that the arc sine of 1 half is equal to 30 degrees. So the result from that is, ah, therefore, theta is equal to 30 degrees. Now, most calculators can do that actually for you. For example, if you grab your calculator, you go 1 divided by 2 equals, that's 0 0.5, that's 1 half, and then you take the inverse sine on your calculator. So you hit the second, uh, second function shift sign, I get 30. It gives me the angle like that. So most calculators can just automatically give it to you, but it's nice to know how to do it without the calculator. It's nice to realize that if the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse is equal to 1 half, if you take the arc sine of that, that tells you that the angle is 30 degrees, and that's how we do that. Now, what we could also do is we can use the inverse cosine function. We can say that theta is equal to the inverse cosine function of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, that ratio of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So in this particular problem, theta is equal to the arc cosine of the, uh, the adjacent side, which is 8.66, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 10, or theta is equal to the r cosine of 0 0.866, which, by the way, is equal to the r cosine of the square root of 3 over 2. Now you say to yourself, okay, for what angle is the cosine of that angle the square root of 3 over 2? And you say, ah, I know what that is. That's 30 degrees. So you say theta, therefore, must be equal to 30 degrees. Or what you could do is you grab your calculator, you punch in 0.866, you take the inverse cosine, and there it is, 30 degrees, just like that. We could also use the tangent of theta. We could say, and let me carve out a little bit of space here, we could say that theta is equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So we take the ratio of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, and that should give us the arctangent, which enables us to give the angle. So theta is equal to the arctangent of the opposite side, which is 5, divided by the adjacent side, which is 8.66. And then you grab your calculator. You go 5 divided by 8.66. You take the second function tangent, or the inverse tangent of your calculator, and there it is, 30 degrees. So theta equals 30 degrees. And so you can see that you can do this using the arc sine, 
the arc cosine and the arc tangent and in each case you find the angle theta to be 30 degrees so that's what we use the inverse trigonometric functions for in a right angle triangle we use it to find the unknown angle if the sides are known we can find the unknown angle we can find this angle because then this becomes the opposite side this becomes the adjacent side so you can say that the tangent of this angle is equal to the ratio of these two sides this one divided by that one so therefore the arc tangent the angle is equal to the arc tangent of this divided by this and that gives you that angle right there which of course in this case would be 60 degrees so that's how we use inverse trigonometric functions to find the unknown angles in right angle triangles so we do that